Greetings, friends, family, anybody who may be joining me today for story time with Rob. I have a good one for you today. And I was thinking this morning, um, I had to come in early to work, and so I'm shooting here from my office. But I was thinking this morning, um, over the last couple of weeks, sending out these stories, I hope that in some small way I may have brightened your day a little bit. Um, today's story is a good one, and I think you're going to like it. It is called Captain Nice. Bartholomew Roberts was an old-time sea captain. Yet, if your conception of what an old-time sea captain is supposed to be includes being boisterous, rough-talking, hard-drinking, irreverent, then maybe you are better hear the rest of the story. Once upon a time, ship's musicians were among the hardest working crew members. Like the family physician of long ago, they were always on call. If anyone aboard ship wanted music at any time of day or night, the ship's orchestra was required to provide music. Had no idea, never ever thought of that. The man who changed all that was Captain Bartholomew Roberts. Aboard his ships, the fortune the good fortune and the royal fortune, the musicians were not only allowed but obliged to take Sundays off. You see, Captain Roberts' background was conservative Welsh. He was a strict Sabbatarian. Once a week, on every cruise, religious services were held. Temperance was another of Captain Roberts' convictions. The hours during which crew members could drink beverages containing alcohol were carefully regulated. Alcoholism, or even common intoxication, was positively prohibited. As for himself, Captain Roberts drank tea, and only tea. Games were permitted aboard unless money was involved. Any form of gambling was against regulations. In fact, the captain frowned on games such as cards or dice simply because those games were generally associated with uh, gambling. There was no record of a woman ever having been smuggled aboard any of Captain Roberts' vessels by any member of his crew. The reason is obvious. The captain made it clear that any member guilty of such immoral behavior would be hanged. I don't know if Captain Roberts ever conducted a bed check of those serving under him. However, there was a standing order that lights were to be out at 8 p.m. sharp. Of course, no fighting was allowed. This was the way Captain Roberts handled it. If two crew members had a quarrel, which could not be resolved through discussion, they were required to wait until the ship had reached port. Then, to settle their dispute on land in a fair fight, refereed by the ship's quartermaster. Under no circumstances was such violence to be permitted on board any vessel commanded by Captain Roberts. If this discipline was remarkable for the high seas of the early 18th century, Roberts himself was a remarkable man always superbly groomed, splendidly attired. He wore a rich crimson damask waistcoat and trousers and a red feather in his tricorn hat. Two pair of pistols on the end of his silk sling over his shoulders, a gleaming sword at his side, and a gold chain suspended, uh, a diamond cross around his neck. Captain Bartholomew Roberts. Those serving in his command called him pistol-proof, a phrase used to describe only the most adept in ship handling, crew control, and the tactics of naval warfare. There's no telling the greatness he might have achieved on the right side of wrong, for Captain Bartholomew Roberts was a strict Sabbatarian a teetotaler, a gentleman who disapproved of fast money and loose women. 
He was Mr. Discipline, Captain Nice, and yet he captured more than 400 ships during one four-year period in his career as a pirate. One of the most feared and often considered the greatest pirate in the history of piracy, Bartholomew Roberts was, in fact, the original Black Bart. And now you know the rest of the story. But it doesn't end there. So I have the rest of the rest of the story because it got me to thinking. In the movie The Princess Bride, which is probably one of the most quoted movies ever made, and if you haven't seen it, go rent it because you're not doing anything right now anyway, and watch it because it's a classic Wesley, the hero of the Princess Bride, was on a voyage to seek his fortune when his ship was captured by none other than the dread pirate Roberts. Think about that for a second. Who, as he quoted in the movie, never leaves captives alive. And Wesley is reported dead. While the other passengers are weeping and offering bribery for their lives, Wesley simply asks... Roberts, please not to kill him. The pleas aroused his interest, and Roberts asks, why should I make an exception of you? Wesley then explains his mission to get, mo get enough money to re reunite with his love, Buttercup. Wesley's description of Buttercup moves, Buttercup's beauty moves Roberts to the point that he hires Wesley as a personal attendant while Roberts is impressed with Wesley's work, he continues to keep Wesley's future in doubt by saying to him this each and every night. Good night, Wesley. Good work. Sleep well. I'll most likely kill you in the morning. After about three years, Roberts and Wesley have grown close, and Roberts promoted Wesley, as you know in the movie, to his second-in-command. Shortly after that, Roberts reveals to Wesley the guise of the dread pirate Roberts is merely a pseudonym that he has inherited and that his real name is Ryan. Roberts goes on to explain that the, mention, that the method works because Roberts' notorious reputation inspires overwhelmingly, overwhelming fear in sailors. Ships immediately capitulate and surrender their wealth rather than be captured a fate they imagine to be certain death. A pirate operating under his own name is said to be incapable of such infamy. No one, as he quoted, would surrender to the dread pirate Wesley. Just maybe, just maybe that's why Wesley was so refined and polite because he was taught under Bartholomew Roberts. But now you know the rest of the story. Thanks again. I'm glad you joined me today, and I hope you have a great day. Till tomorrow, be safe.